Okay, the one I've got is a regular bag, which weighs 1,190 grams. It's got, and 700 grams of that is the downfill inside it, which has a 650 loft, and that's grey duck down, 100% in there. And it's been treated with a moisture prevention thing, so it doesn't retain moisture, which which I'm not intending to get the bag wet anyway. Now, it's a tapered bag, as you can see at the bottom there. It's not a mummy bag, so as it's, as it's not rounded as such, you have to be careful with the length of it. You don't want your feet jammed down the end of it. So that's that there. The, outs the outside of the bag here, is a 30 denier nylon and the inside of the bag here which is really nice on your hand which would be really nice to sleep in that's a, a 20 den denier fabric inside the bag there and down the length of the zip it's got a, a draft tube that runs down the full length of the zip so obviously when you're on the inside you press against that tube which is filled with down and that presses against the zip so you don't have any cold spots down the zip. This Trek 3 bag of the of the of the Trek 1, 2 and 3, the 3 bag I have, Trek 3, is the warmest bag. And this is the only bag that has has this uh, neck baffle, obviously to stop the warmth coming up through the bag and escaping, because that's closed around your neck. The baffles on the bottom of the bag here run horizontal across the bag and that's got a strip sewn in of down sewn in through the side there to stop anything any of the down migrating underneath the bag and over the top over your torso the baffles run vertically over your torso to give you to give you more warmth and, and loft over your torso The bag at the top here, when you've got it zipped up and you've got your head inside the bag, you can sink, sink it down and you've also got a, a clasp there which you can snap on there which stops any tendency of the, uh, of the zip to, to wander down. So that's, that's another feature of the bag. And see the summit also give you with the bag a uh, you know a down compliance what exactly is in a bound just to verify that what you're buying is, is what you're getting in the bag so this is a this is a left hand zip on this bag and you can get a right hand zip bag so if you have a couple you can uh, zip the bags together so that's uh, another added bonus of this bag the bag has also got the anti-snag zips that uh, They work really fantastic. So uh, the days of the zip snagging are over on this particular bag anyway. That's one of the reasons why I bought it. The foot box here on the end, that opens as well. So if you get warm, you can open up, open up the foot box there to uh, get some air into the bag there so that's another feature of it and you can also this zipper zipper here you can open up that part way to let more air in the bag that's another feature and on this bag as well the outer and inner aren't sewn through anywhere so that doesn't create a cold spot so that's a, that's another good feature which is, is is probably in a lot of bags anyway but the cheaper bags obviously they can be sewn through which creates a, a cold spot which this bag doesn't have also inside here you've got an internal pocket here which is great for storing 
you know, in cold conditions, store your batteries in there or your mobile phone. So that's another good point with the bag. As I said before, it's a 650 plus loft bag. So it's, it's not too big a loft, so you can pack it down in a quite a small compression sack, which comes with it, which I'll show you later. Now this rating on the side here for the bag, you've got a comfort level of minus six centigrade, a lower limit of minus 12, an extreme limit of minus 31. That's in the centigrade. You've also got them in Fahrenheit on here as well. But the end one there, you can almost ignore because you're not going to get, that's just about stopping you get hypothermia, but you're not going to get any sleep. And the middle one is, is the lower limit. But this one here, the comfort level itself, I don't know if you know, I only know a bit about this. But this minus six, the lower level, that, that figure is modelled on a 25 year old man dressed in a base layer with socks on of a certain weight. Now I'm nearly 70 and I'm probably not that optimum weight so I could maybe drop a, deg uh, a degree off that. Then it's also optimum conditions that would be on the on the uh, mat I'm using the thermal rating of that. How if I'm a cold or warm sleeper you know, I obviously need to have a hot meal before I went to bed or do some exercise before I went to bed to get my body heat up before I get in the bag. All these factors come into it. So you've got to be really aware that just because it says this on the bag, that doesn't mean it's going to be absolutely applicable to you. I'm just a tad under six foot and it works, works, uh, works well for me. It feels really snug and comfortable. But I say, if you are... Anything over six foot, six one, six two, you definitely want to get a longer bag. And I say it suits my, I'm quite slender, so the width suits me as well. But I'd say if, you, if you're quite a solid person, you know, you uh, might not, the Trek 3 may not suit you either because of, of the width of it, because you can't get uh, different widths. You can only get the wider widths in the Trek two and trek one. Now the zip on the side here to open it up as a quilt I found a bit problematical but once you get used to it it's okay so you're going to get the foot box zip like that and open the, open the foot box zip up fully. Now this side zip here it zips right down up against the other zip like that and then this this part here just comes out and it folds out as a quilt. But when you put it back in, make sure you have both the zips together. You've got this end here, you bring up into there and make sure that, make sure that goes into both zips. And then you can zip it up again as a sleeping bag. So yeah, that's just a... Uh, you're going to zip the foot box up again then it's back to your sleeping bag. That was the only part I found that was a bit problematical. But as I say, once I've tried it out a few times it works well. Okay, this is the, uh, the stuff sack it came with. And here's the bag. Now obviously, as the term said, it's a stuff sack. So you're obviously going to start with the foot end because you want the air to go out of the hood end. So you start with the foot end and you start feeding that into the sack. Nice and slowly. Not just gradually forcing it, turn the bag round and just give it a bit of a roll around 
to make sure it's pretty even. And there you have the bag in a compression sack like that. So you've got the, the top on there and you've got the three things and then you're going to start sinking it down on each one. And try and keep doing it evenly. And there's the bag. Sink down in the compression sack. Okay, so when you take the sleeping bag out the compression bag again, just fluff it up a bit. Put it over your arms like that and just fluff the bag up to get the loft back up again each time you use it. So there you go, like that. And then the loft is back up again for use. Now this is the other bag that comes with it and this is what you want to store it in all the time. Don't ever fold it to put it in that, that creates crease lines in the down just stuff it into this bag this time same way bottom in first so the air comes out through the hood Now that's stuffed in there, ready to be zipped up, like that, give it a bit of a puff up in the bag, and there you go. That's to see the Summit Trek 3 bag, ready to go into my cupboard again. Okay, I hope that was reasonably informative for you, of the uh, See the Summit TK3 sleeping bag. I'm sure it's going to work out fine for me and I'm sure it could for you as well. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope to catch you on the next video which will be hopefully I'll get outside again and be on a hike. Okay, take care, goodbye and thanks for watching.